Hi everybody, it's Carla, and today I'm going to be talking about mediumship, and I'm going to be talking about interpretation, I'm going to be talking about accuracy, and the language of energy. For those of you who do follow me, you know that I do work as a medium, and I also do psychic readings. And um, today I am going to be talking about interpretation and accuracy. Now, um, I use clairvoyance, I use a clear audience, I use a clear tasting, clear hearing, clear knowing. Uh, I use whatever is available and I use whatever I can depending on how that spirit is communicating with me. Now some spirits communicate better than others and um, with others sometimes it's a little bit more difficult. And you have to remember that this is a language of energy and that goes for for psychic readings as well i will see things and my job is to show you or to tell you what it is that i'm seeing hearing tasting feeling knowing um you know whatever and i do want to talk about the difference between knowing or hearing or getting the things that it is that you need to hear and talking about sometimes what people expect to hear or what they want to hear. Um, my job as a medium is to tell you exactly what it is I'm seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, and I am the interpreter. This is a language of energy and there are room for errors and for mistakes. Um, any medium or psychic that tells you that they are 100% accurate, I would go in the other direction. We are humans and there is room for error. And sometimes I'm getting something that is not for you or a spirit may come through that is meant for either somebody that's close to you or a family member or something, you know, something like that. A lot of people come into a reading and there are specific things that they want to hear and sometimes that's not what I'm picking up or what I'm getting. The key to a good reading is to come in with an open mind and an open heart and just to listen to what it is that I'm saying to you. The spirit is never wrong. The only part that is wrong is my interpretation of it I suppose. That's why I try to keep it simple. If I show you, if somebody is showing me a fire truck, I'm going to say, can you connect with the fire truck? Or, you know, I'm using that as an example. And you're either going to say yes or no. And a lot of times you're not going to understand until the reading is over. That's why I like to tell people to come in with an open mind and just receive and, and soak in everything that I'm, that I'm saying. I do record all my readings that way people can listen to them later and they're going to catch something that that they either didn't understand or maybe somebody else in the family could understand or a friend. Many times I will get spirits that come through for a client that is not for them. It could be for a family member or it could be for a close friend. So your job is to relay the message of what I'm getting. Um, if anybody ever tells you that they're a hundred percent accurate, I would find uh, somebody else. We're humans and there is room for mistake and there is room for error. There, there just is, there's just no way around that. Um, it is a language of energy and a lot of times I'm being shown things in video form or I'm being shown, um, pictures, you know, photographs. I will get a scent. I'll get a certain taste in my mouth. Um, the way I work is very physical. So if somebody passed from some kind of a trauma, like a head trauma, or um, they were shot, I feel the impact. Those of you who are following me, I've discussed this before. Um, if somebody is sick, I will feel that illness, or I will feel um, the issues that go on, go along with that illness. Again, the spirit is never wrong. It's the interpretation. And again, there is room for error here. Um, I am merely the medium, the interpreter in between. The most important thing you can do when you come 
for mediumship reading with anybody is to come in with an open heart and an open mind and just listen to what is coming, you know, what is coming through and try to make the connections of what it is that I'm telling you that I'm being shown or I'm feeling or I'm tasting or I'm smelling, uh, you know, any of those things. Many times I will hear an audible voice. Again, it's important that you understand that the spirit people, they do not have a mouth. So it is a language of energy. So if they're using their energy to use the voice that they don't have, it takes energy on their part to do that. And a lot of times the easiest way to do this is by showing me pictures or videos or names and things like that. So I try to the best of my ability just to tell you what it is that I'm getting. And sometimes what happens is I will try to use the, uh, my, my logical brain at times and I'll try to interpret something. And this is where issues can come in. Um, because I, like I said, there is room for error here. So just make sure that you're paying attention and I record all my readings. That way you can listen to them later. A lot of times I will get something that is for someone else and you can relay that message to your loved one, your friend, uh, whatever. The same thing is with psychic readings. What I'm picking up that might be happening for you in the future is something that I'm seeing. And again, there is room for error here. Um, a lot of times people that have a psychic reading, when they come back, they tell me that everything pretty much played out like a script. That's not always the case. Things can change um, because life changes. So what I'm seeing is one of the possible outcomes that could happen for you. And timelines are tricky as well. A lot of people want to know when is this going to happen. Um, and I try to have either your spirit guides or your loved ones show me to the best of their ability but since there is no time where they are you have to remember that sometimes this can be this can be skewed so it's important that you have patience to let these things play out and sometimes something else happens and gets in in the way of either your your timeline or what i have foreseen and things can change so just keep that in mind and remember that this is a language of energy and there is room uh, for error. We as mediums and psychics, we're human and sometimes sometimes something's just not going to make sense or the interpretation is wrong. But what Spirit is showing me is not wrong. It's in either my delivery or I'm trying to logically figure out what it is that they're showing me. Now, this takes a lot of energy on their part as well. When I'm doing a mediumship reading, you have to understand they have to lower their vibrations and I have to raise mine and we meet in somewhere in, in the middle. Um, again, they have no voice because they have no physical body. So if I'm actually hearing a voice and they're speaking to me, it is like trying to tune into a radio station that is um, distant. Most of the times when I hear spirit, it is um, clear, you know, really clearly is either in the middle of the night when everything's very calm and everything's very peaceful. It's easier to tune into. Um, during a reading, I will hear an audible voice at times. But again, it's like trying to tune into a radio station that um, you're not picking up very well because remember, they, they are in a different, different dimension and they are lowering their vibrations in order to communicate with me. Um, I just did the Body, Mind, Spirit Expo. That was two days of non-stop readings. Okay. Um, that is very difficult to do and it's very draining and it's very exhausting. I did 31 readings over um, Saturday and Sunday and it was one right after another. And in order for me to do that, I have to keep vibrating at a very high level for a very long period of time. We're talking seven to eight hours a day. 
that's a lot. That's why it's it's draining. Um, and there's a lot of people at these expos as well, so that you're being bombarded with energy from all corners of this arena. <clears throat> I'm still recuperating from those two days, and when I'm done, like after the first day, I'm you know I'm totally drained. My brain is mushy. It's like running your car at say 150 miles an hour for the whole day. That is not good for your engine. It it it, it does create some damage. So it's the same thing. I'm running my engine at at high speed for those two days. This is one of the reasons why it takes me about a re week to recover after uh, a two day event like that. Um, I lose my voice. It, my voice sound a, might sound a little raspy right right now, and that is why. Uh, this was, it's already been what, it's Thursday, and the expo was over on Sunday. So I am getting my voice back now, and during the expo, I am buzzing the whole time. That's a lot of people. It went very well. Everybody got really good readings. And um, after that, I pretty much crash. And I'm only saying this thing about interpretations and such because sometimes people come in with an expectation that they want to hear something specific. And that one thing that they really wanted to hear is not something that I'm being shown. What I'm being shown is up to the spirit person. Okay, it is up to the spirit person what they show me, what they tell me, how they make me feel, what I taste, what I smell, uh, things like that. And um, it's hard, and it's hard on the body of the person that's doing the readings as well. It is. It's not, it's not an easy thing to do. That's why I limit my readings during the week. I won't do more than three because I want to be able to do good readings the next day and have the energy level to do it. Um, I'm, now I'm picking up. I'm picking up something for somebody that's coming tomorrow. Uh, usually, when I do body, mind, spirit, I don't book readings until the end of the week, which is tomorrow. And um, I only booked two people because I know I'm still recuperating from that. Sometimes you have to wait for a reading. Uh, most people have uh, uh, get booked in advance. And um, sometimes people don't want to wait for, uh, you know, a few weeks for a reading. Uh, we can only do so many in a day. And if you get booked, you, you just have to wait and be patient. I mean, I know there's a lot of mediums out there that have um, usually the ones that, that, that are very well known and famous and things like that. They might have a waiting list of a year or two years. So you, you have to be patient. And... Um, it can be it can be difficult if you if you need to wait because you want to get a reading right away but you have to do you do have to understand that we are we are only people and we can only do so much so keep that in mind if you book a reading with anybody um, it is important for people to know that again this is a language of energy and what I'm telling you or, or what I'm being shown, I'm going to tell you exactly what it is that I'm picking up. And a lot of times I will ask you, can you relate with this or, or do you understand what I'm telling you or what I'm being shown? And um, that's all you can do. You know, that's really, that's really all you can do. Most of the time, all my readings go really well. People get what they're looking for. They get the answers they're looking for. They get the healing that they need or the closure that they need and such. So with that being said, um, let's see what I'm going to be talking about next. Uh, more than likely it will have something to do with a medium chip. I think I'm going to focus on that for, for a while only because that is the main type of reading I do. I, mean, I do do the psychic readings and I do past life readings as well. So, hey, why did that go away? 
my thing, my video just stopped. So, um, I hope everybody has a good week and keep an open mind, open heart when you're going to get a reading. And, uh, if anybody has any questions, my brain's still kind of wonky from the expo. Um, I met a lot of, of cool people that I did readings for, and I appreciate very much that the people that did get a reading with me were willing to wait. Some people had to wait three hours to get a reading and they had to hang around, you know, the expo, which is easy to do because there's a lot of vendors and there's a lot of other readers there as well. But, um, I do appreciate people waiting to get uh, a reading with me. It means a lot to me. And, um, if anybody happened to be there and did get a reading with me, I want to thank you. And, um, like I said, my next video is probably going to be about mediumship in some form or another. Um, everybody has this ability to a certain extent. People a lot of times blow off little things, little signs, little symbols. And I have to say that at any moment, at any time, regardless on what you're doing, if you're in the house, if you're driving, if you're at work or, or whatever, if anything makes you think about a loved one who's on the other side, um, whether it be a butterfly or a song on the radio or, or anything, anytime your loved one pops into your head and you happen to not be thinking of them at that moment, know that they are trying to get your attention just to say, hello, hey, I'm here. Know that I'm okay, that I'm fine. A lot of times people do blow these things off as a coincidence or whatever. I'm here to tell you it is not a coincidence. Anytime your loved one pops into your head, know that they are right there trying to get your attention to say hello or whatever. If you keep listening or you keep paying, paying attention in your, in your mind's eye, they might show you uh, an image of something, a video of something, or, you know, whatever, a taste of something, a smell. Um, if you happen to smell something that reminds you of your loved one, know that, that that is them trying to get your attention, saying, hey, I'm here, I'm okay, I am with you, I love you, I know you miss me, and I'm here trying to help you in any way that I can. A lot of times people think that spirit people have the answers to everything, and, and they don't. They're not, um, sometimes they're not allowed to give you certain information about an issue that might be going on in your life. Like if you are asking your, your grandmother or your mom or your dad or your brother or whatever for help on something specific, like I, I need an answer to this. They might not be able to tell you because you're just not supposed to know because it's something that either you have to learn. Um, there's some karma to be balanced. Say that, um, you, you got into an accident or, and you got hurt or you fell and you got hurt and you wonder why didn't my loved one protect me from this or give me a heads up. Uh, most likely it's because that they were not allowed to interfere in this certain situation or that they're not supposed to interfere in a certain situation. So with that, I'm going to um, sign off and next week I will do another video probably about mediumship or psychic readings or past life readings or whatever. So hope you guys have a good week and I will talk to you next time. Bye.